Hi, welcome to this lecture. Uh, it's a part of the R Boot Camp series for the Data Science Garage. Uh, this is uh, one of a couple of introductory lectures to get you um, started in the quickest possible way. Um, you may have already watched the uh, overview. In, in this lecture, we're going to uh, talk about two of the core tools we'll be using throughout the whole boot camp, and that is um, RStudio and uh, how to set up R scripts to run the code that you're going to encounter to do that, that work converting data into information. Now you can find the, um, the material to read along with this uh, particular introduction at this URL. So this is, um, this is just before really the uh, boot camp proper starts. So this is uh, an introduction to the boot camp. And now what do you need to do and what are you going to learn on this page? Well, one of the basic things, if you don't already have it done, is you'll need to install R and R Studio, uh, picking the correct uh, version for your operating system, whether that's Windows, Macintosh, or maybe Linux. Maybe some of you are using Linux. Um, we're going to begin the practice, start the ball rolling, thinking about good reproducible scripting for uh, documenting our analyses. And um, also we'll talk a little bit about the, the vision for the design of these learning materials. Okay, so I'll just emphasize this as we go along through all of the boot camp pages. The idea is to work on your own, read the pages, and uh, type and run all of the code, and ideally um, attempting and completing the um, exercises as well. It's all good practice. Now you can follow the instructions and the other materials on the page for installing R and R Studio, but when you do, the main interfaces for um, interacting with the program are the uh, script window by default, that's in the upper left up here, and you notice there are some tabs for different scripts, so you can have more than one open at a time. I often have a, a whole bunch, but um, you only have to look at one at a time. Notice this one is in, in blue text. It's different. Uh, the title of this page is um, colored differently than the titles of the other tabs, and that's because it hasn't been saved yet. There have been some, some changes that haven't been saved. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the global environment. That's a visual representation of of data and data objects that you have loaded up that you can work on. We uh, the script window is for inputs and commands to tell the um, system what to do, and the console window down here is for outputs. That's where the results of analyses get displayed uh, if they're text-based and if they're graphic. Um, they would get displayed over here in the plots window. Now um, up here the script window the only thing we'll usually see up here is scripts but for the other windows um, there are options so down here in the console the console is just one of several tabs that are available to you. So We'll talk about possibly um, some of these other tabs uh, in the coming um, bootcamp pages the global environment has a couple of different tabs as well, uh, and the plots window has a couple of different tabs as well. And, and it's the ones down here I'll just briefly mention. There's a file browser, um, a browser for R packages, and uh, the help tab. Now we'll use all of those um, possibly very regularly uh, in our journey. Another thing that we'll touch on in this um, boot camp page is um, the concept of setting up a, a stereotypical reproducible best practice R script. Now an R script is just a text file that is recognized by uh, if you're using R Studio, it's, it's recognized by R Studio as an R script and it opens up and um, what I prescribe to you is 
the use of a um, of a header section. If you notice, there's a little uh, arrow over here on the left hand pane that um, defines a code chunk. And this code chunk is the header. This code chunk is the contents. And this code chunk is a section called setup, which is one of the points in the table of contents. So each of the contents um, items might have its own code chunk down below here. We define a code chunk with the hash symbol. We have to have at least one at the beginning of the line, some text, and at least four hashes at the end of the line. And that's all it takes to define the beginning of a code chunk. The end of the code chunk is defined by the beginning of the next code chunk. If we set up our script like this with these code chunks and this code chunk syntax, we get a clickable index. Um, so we'll talk through how that works. The header contains information like who has programmed it, what the contents of the script are, and maybe the date that it was last edited. This is very useful as time goes on, and you should have uh, one of these scripts that you make for every um, R Bootcamp web page to document your work so that you can dip back into it as a as an archive of possibly useful code and and as an archive for learning. The contents, um, now once scripts get longer than just you know 15, 20 lines of code, you uh, at a glance can just look right near the top of the script and see every little thing that's in the code. And if you set up the code chunks, and you want to navigate to a lower down section, it's very easy. You just use the clickable uh, index. And likewise, the sections. So that's the anatomy of a reproducible script. And that's the end of this, uh, this lecture. We'll see you in the next one.